Hi YouTube and happy Thursday. It is a very chilly night in the DMV, which means it is a great time to stay inside and make another home video thing in the minimalist computing theme. Tonight I want to tell you just a little bit about my Texas Instruments TI-66 programmable graphing calculator that I picked up I think about four or five years ago for about twenty dollars on eBay. It's amazing to me how common these these TI-66s are on eBay considering that they were released according to data math here just to the right of the camera in 1983 while you know TI graphing calculators are still being sold in stores today. These are very easy to get on eBay or whatever online shopping app that you happen to use. I think now, considering my other videos, is a great time to talk about it because I think these are your perfect Turing Complete minimalist computer in your pocket. These things will run forever on just two button cell batteries and have a full Turing Complete programming language that's very close to assembly. I had a lot of fun during the pandemic programming this to use a um, what's it called a semi or use a semi Eulerian method to simulate disease transmission. I have a video on that that I'll include in the description. Those of you who've watched my channel for a while might remember it. I have featured this in previous videos as well as one on why I talk a little bit about the power of programmable calculators as a programming teaching tool. I really wanted to get into that, but I never did earlier in the pandemic. I think now and not too long in conjunction with those digital to you videos and Ken back videos, I'll write more algorithms and programs for programmable calculators. Okay. So what's interesting, the first, I think, interesting fact about the TI-66 programmable is although it says Texas Instruments at the top and there's the cute little TI there on the right, it is not, in fact, a Texas Instruments factory manufactured product. It was actually made by Toshiba for TI and some people claim this accounts for why it's so reliable and long-lasting, whereas a lot of TI manufactured products, especially the TI-55 and 57 LCD models, as well as I think some of the earlier uh, LED display TIs like the 58C and 59 that are really famous are nowhere near as reliable. This thing is still running on two LR44 or 357 button cell batteries accessible under that cover that I installed four years ago. It has not had a single battery change. That's really, really incredible. You can see a serial number is 104 here, or not, maybe not 104, uh, 357051. And the fact it's made in Japan is a hint at its... Uh, Toshiba Origins. There's four nice little pads here to lift this off the uh, surface of a desk or a piece of paper. It does have output, a two-pin serial output that I haven't decoded on the right side of the calculator for a TIPC200 printer. I wonder if I, you know, got an oscilloscope or made one with an Arduino, if I could uh, decode the serial protocol for this and be able to save programs to a PC. That would be quite fun. I, I have done uh, something similar, but a lot simpler, building a uh, tape replacement interface for the TI-95, which I've talked about in a prior video. I think is really my favorite standard algebraic programmable programmable calculator. Okay, so so I'll go ahead and um, turn it on. There's on and off buttons here in red and gray on the right side of the calculator. It's a landscape form factor. I believe this is part of the Galaxy series by um, TI that's comparable to the 
is it the Voyager? Yeah, the Voyager series of HPs, including the HP 15C, which I'll feature in a future video. Again, I think what's truly striking when you look in this keyboard is you can see almost all the critical operations operations here for using this as a calculator or programming it right on the keyboard. I think that's a really great user interface just to you know, think about the programming language in terms of um, keystrokes. After all, these are keystroke programmable calculators, but really have all those those different different functions. You know, subroutines, jumps. Was it, uh, <laughs> subroutines, jumps, uh, conditionals, indirect addressing, and everything right at your fingertips, along with other built-in operations. Okay, I'll go ahead and turn it on. Uh, you can see it's a pretty simple LCD uh, display. There's uh, degrees there as far as degrees, gradients, or or radians there on 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 the left, and just you know numbers um, entered in not in a dot matrix format, but a um, seven segment format. That's pretty interesting, but in alphanumeric second. Uh, alphanumeric seven segment uh, display as I'll show you in a little bit. I'll go ahead and clear that. Let's see here. Anything else that I wanted to uh, say about this. There's there's different flags that are accessible. There's store and recall functions. There's different standard mathematical functions. You know, I can run one over five. I can square numbers and so on. Uh, it is quite a slow calculator. It's, I think, even slower than the TI-58C uh, and 59. I believe the clock speed is around 200 uh, kilohertz. So while on the plus side you get ultra-long battery life, the downside is, is that this is um, uh, extremely, extremely slow. Okay, so let's see if there's uh, anything else I'll... I wanted to show you there. It's an algebraic operating system. It's not RPN like um, an HP calculator. Just to give some more specs that I'm reading through on data math, it is up to a precision of 13. It has 64 different different numeric memories, 512 program steps. It does allow either relative or absolute addressing, but as, as you can guess, absolute addressing is a lot faster, and this doesn't have a, uh, a lookup table for relative addresses like uh, go to A in a program, which means it has to go and count through all different addresses uh, for each of those, those uh, jumps to a relative address, which makes that much slower than absolute addressing. Okay, so I'll see if there's anything else here we can just see what uh, pi is with uh, second six. And there you go. Uh, the yeah, the precision's uh, 13, but you know you can just see nine uh, decimal points there. Okay. Um, again, it's a slow calculator, but it's a very powerful one and it has some interesting programming tricks. To go into the program mode, we can go to learn, and then back step or, or single step here. Uh, single step forward. I'll show you. A quick program that I wrote to calculate uh, calculate um, factorials. As you can see, uh, one advance over the 58C and the 59 is you do get alphanumeric display of of operations of keystrokes that you put in here, as opposed to a particular uh, a keystroke as an X and Y location in different uh, numbers. Okay, so we have label. And then single step, uh, A prime, which is second A. Uh, store in register 00. zero. Uh, recall register 00. zero. Uh, multiply the two. And then decrement and stop at zero on register 00. zero. And then, uh, let's see, and then, and then uh, zero, I guess, go to zero four if that's, that's not met and then return which ends that uh, subroutine. So that's a quick factorial function. Let's go ahead and see that in uh, action. I'll just go uh, learn and then reset and learn and then make sure we're at uh, the uh, first memory location. Get out of learn there. 
and then I can do five and then hopefully that gives us uh, 120 and you can see that was quite slow but anyway so you, so that was just a simple a simple function to show you how you can calculate uh, factorials I had again used this to to uh, simulate disease transmission during COVID and I think in an hour I got my solution it's definitely really slow but it's a lot of fun to um, uh, program Okay, so there you have you know a quick overview of the TI-66, a really Spartan, very simple calculator. It doesn't really have much in the way of input-output. There's some tricks you can add in uh, to input numbers during a program, but it's not like the TI-95 or you know, a more modern calculator in that sense. And with that, I hope you enjoyed this video. I uh, appreciate your attention. I hope you found this useful, entertaining, and interesting. Please leave your thoughts, comments, suggestions, and questions in the comments down below. And like and subscribe as always. Have a good one.